Let me show you how we can make our images look more 3D by taking advantage of light and shadows. First we're going to merge the panoramic image, then we're going to apply some basic adjustments to it, followed by the most important part of this 3D effect, the masking and a little bit of color grading. Finally, we will finish things up in Photoshop. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw files from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. So here we are in Lightroom down there in the film strip. You can see all the shots needed for the panoramic image, which we are going to first merge now. Select all the images down below, right click on one of them, go to photo merge and choose panorama. In this case, I'm going with the cylindrical projection method and I don't change anything else in here. Just hit the merge button to merge the panorama. Once this is done, it's time for the basic adjustments. That means we're going to do some cropping, adjust the white balance and also play around with the exposure to get a better balance for the brightness of the scene. Of course, first let's crop the image. I'm going to take away a little bit from the right side here and also from the left side. I want to keep this mountain nicely centered in the frame and also we don't need that much of a foreground right here. So that's looking pretty good. Now expand the basic panel and right away I want to change the profile. For this image I do want there to be a little more saturation so I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape which will raise the base saturation of the image very slightly. Then for the next step I want to adjust the base exposure of the scene. Here it's really important to keep an eye on the histogram because we don't want to introduce any clipping either in the darkest or the brightest parts of the image. But we can see there's a lot of room on the right side which means we can make this shot a little brighter by bringing up the exposure. And I do think I'm also going to bring up the whites to stretch the histogram in that direction. Okay, looking good so far. What we can notice is uh, the snow on and the peak of this mountain right here is a little bit too bright. So what I want to do to fix that is to bring down the highlights. So that is looking much better. Now at this point of the editing, I do want to add a bit of contrast and I'm going to do this by bringing down the shadows. Let's drop them quite a bit and always pay close attention to the histogram to not introduce any clipping. And I do want to slightly raise the blacks just to be safe with those very dark areas of this scene. Okay, exposure wise, this looks pretty good. Now I do want to add a little bit of texture to introduce some sharpness. I'm also going to add some clarity and I'm going to add a little bit of dehaze as well, just to give this shot a very clear and sharp looking appearance. Also, I'm going to add some vibrance for more saturation. And at this point, let's also adjust the white balance. I do think this shot is a little bit warm, so I'm going to slightly bring down the white balance temperature. And at this point, we're done with the basic adjustments. So let's compare the image real quick. The most obvious thing are the colors. These are much richer and intense at this point. Also, we do have more contrast. So now that we're done with the basic adjustments, let's take a look at the masking. For that, let's open up the masking panel. And with the masking, we can really enhance the depth of the image. We do have light in this image and we also have shadows in this image. And by making light and shadow more intense, we can improve the 3D effect this image has on us. Let me start by something simple. I'm using a linear gradient and you can see the top left of the image is rather dark. And I want to improve on that. Actually, I want to make the whole sky a lot darker. So I'm using that linear gradient and I'm covering pretty much the whole sky, but I'm covering more of the left side than I'm doing on the right side. Because right here, there is some more light and I don't really want to change this area at this point. So what I'm going to do with this linear gradient is to pull down the exposure, introducing more shadows to this area. I'm also going to bring up the contrast just to give the clouds a little more structure. And for the same effect, I'm going to bring up the clarity. All right, this is looking really, really good. I can already deactivate this mask and you will notice a big difference from before to after. So I would say let's continue working on the left side. I'm going to use another linear gradient covering only the left side. I'm also making sure to not include too much of this bright mountain in the center because we need to have light on this part. We don't want to make this area darker, just the left side. 
So I'm going to pull it in a little more and let's maybe rotate it a bit as well. All right. I do want to change the left side, but I don't want to affect the foreground because right here in the foreground, you can see we do have some very nice highlights, which I kind of want to keep. So what I'm going to do is to modify this mask. I'm going to click on subject, choose a linear gradient, and I'm going to get rid of that foreground in this mask. So just like this is okay, I guess. And again, what I'm going to do is to make this area darker to make the shadows deeper. How I'm going to do that is by simply pulling down the shadows. And I think we can safely pull them all the way down. In fact, I think that's not enough. I'm also going to pull down the blacks in this case. And as I do this again, I'm paying close attention to the histogram because we don't want to overdo it, of course. But I think that's looking really, really good. Now, why didn't I drop the exposure, but instead used shadows and blacks to make this area darker? This is a very important reason because I don't want to affect the remaining highlights in this area. So the snowflakes and the light hitting the water. Because if I pull down the exposure, the highlights will become darker as well. I think we can also work on the right side a little bit. We do have uh, some brighter areas on the right side, but I want to also guide the viewer's eye more towards the center of this image. So I'm going to use a linear gradient for that. I'm going to cover a lot of the right side as well. Again, I want to further modify this mask, taking out the foreground by subtracting a linear gradient like this. And I might even want to take out the sky using another linear gradient. All right, I think that's looking good. Again, I'm going to bring down the shadows. Let's bring them down all the way. And I'm also going to bring down the blacks because we don't really want to affect the highlights in this area. All right, this is looking really, really good. So we do have some very deep shadows on both sides of this mountain in the center. And this in turn not only adds the 3D effect, but it will also guide the viewer's eye towards the brightest parts of the image. We can further improve on this effect using another linear gradient for the foreground. So let's create one like this. I'm only wanna, I only want to target a very tiny portion of the foreground and I just want to simply pull down the exposure a bit. We don't have any interesting highlights in this area anyway, so I can pull down the exposure safely. Of course, we cannot only improve this 3D effect by making shadows deeper. We can also work on the highlights of the image. So let's use a radial gradient. And with this radial gradient, I'm going to cover this bright mountain in the center. And I just want to add a little more detail to it. I'm going to do that by bringing up in the clarity first, just giving this mountain a little more structure. And while we add it, I do think I want to introduce some more saturation to this spot. So this image is already looking much, much better. But at this point, I want to use some more advanced masks. I want to separate our bright subject in the center a little more from the surrounding areas. So how can we do that? Let me create a radial gradient. I'm going to place it right here at the edge between our subject and the mountains in the distance. What I want to do with this radial gradient is I want to target these darker mountains and make them darker and thus separating the bright mountain in the foreground more from the background. Of course, we don't want to affect the bright mountain in the foreground. So we need to further modify this radial gradient. I'm going to click on subtract and here I'm choosing the objects selection mask. Very important, with the select object mask, you want to activate rectangle select. And once that is activated, you can draw a rectangle around an object. And just like that, we have a perfect mask for the background. But we also have a bit of sky selected in here. So I'm going to subtract a sky selection mask. And just like that, we have a nice mask targeting the dark mountains in the back without affecting the subject in the foreground. So what we're going to do in here is to bring down the blacks, adding more contrast and thus separating these parts of the image. All right, that's looking gorgeous. Now I want to do something else. I want to use an object selection mask. Then let's select our subject right here in the center. And what I want to do for our subject is to make the back right here, which already lies in the shadows, a little bit darker. So we need to again modify this mask. Let's click on subject, 
and choose a linear gradient. I'm going to subtract pretty much everything of this mountain except for the back right here. And again, we're going to bring down the shadows and we're going to bring down the blacks to add more depth to our subject. Maybe even bring down the exposure a bit, but that's looking great. And I think at this point, we are pretty much done with the masking. So let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before with our basic adjustments to after. You can nicely see the 3D effect we have created using these masks. So now let's do a little bit of color grading, but there's not much going on. I'm going to start in the color mixer. We can use the luminance tab to add a more contrast to this image. You can see the blue tones of this shot are naturally already darker. I want to emphasize this effect by bringing down the blue luminance, making these blue tones even darker this way. All right, then let's head over into the saturation tab. I just want to bring up the yellow tones and the green tones very, very gently and maybe erase the blue tones a bit. Okay, then I'm also going to use the calibration settings here. As for all my images, I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue a bit and I'm going to bring up the blue primary saturation as well. Okay, looking good so far. Then I want to head into the details tab to sharpen this image. I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details, hold on the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider. As you can see, we can nicely mask out the sky and the water. And then let's increase the amount of sharpening. So that's it for the editing part in Lightroom. As I said in the intro, we will be doing some final adjustments in Photoshop. So therefore, let's open up this image in Photoshop, right click on it, go to edit in and edit in Photoshop. And what I want to do in here is obviously I want to fix that gap at, at the top of the image. I'm just going to use the lesser tool to create a very rough selection right here. And let's see, maybe the content where fill is enough for that. I'm going to hit Shift F5 and let's choose content aware and hit OK. This is looking pretty good. Now I do think I want to crop the image a little bit more, taking out some more of the right side and a little bit from the left as well, and maybe from the bottom. But that's it for editing this image and creating the stronger 3D effect using basically only Lightroom for it. So I hope this little tutorial was helpful and interesting. Of course, if you want to add anything or if you have any questions left about the editing, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.